you know let's start with a small story that i used to hear you know i'm sure like you know we all know about different fables different parables different stories about how important is the truth in our life so the story goes like there was a, a simple boy his name is radhua you know and he was a cowherd boy in the village so his job was to take all the cows from the villagers and then take them to the forest for grazing so that and in the evening he'll bring back those cows so he was a little naughty child so he was very curious to explore things in life sometimes adventurous way so one day it occurred to him like it's a boring job that every day i just get the herds of cow and then you know just spend time alone nothing to do in this un- in this forest let me play some tricks so he thinks about something in his mind and goes to on the top of the tree and then just yells at the loudest of his voice to all the villagers 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 please come there is a big tiger who has come here and he'll eat up all your cows please come and by hearing his voice the nearby villagers they left all their work and they started rushing in to the forest and finally when they came to the site this guy just giggling this laughing because he just played a plot he just played a trick it there was no tiger so it was a lie and he became very happy about this of course that was his idea how to get some kicks in life and then it the happiness lasted for one week and after again second week he played the same trick again in a little bit more louder voice in a more um dramatic way he said like not only one tiger there's a bunch of tigers who have come please come right away and i'm telling the truth you know he will also tell a lie in the name of truth and everybody you know with their gullible mind they are rushed to the site and they found there was no tiger cows are grazing happily and this boy again to his heart's content giggled and laughed and you know he enjoyed himself the villagers of course become very angry about him and everybody just left with very distressed and agony and time passed by and after some time in fact the tiger came and he started eating the cows and his life also was in danger he climbed up to the top of the tree and yelled out of fear villagers please come there is a real tiger real tiger i'm not telling a lie this is the truth i'm please 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 he just begged the villagers heard it one time two times three times but nobody bothered because they have already witnessed this child is a naughty child and he must be playing a trick again and they didn't want to be fooled again and again because you can't make somebody fool you know you can make them fool one time two times three times but not all the time so obviously they didn't come and then they it was a dangerous moment and then he was punished after that because so many cows were lost because of his negligence because of his um, immaturity so what is the moral of the story just for your emotional immaturity just for your personal kick if you play with a concept of truth and take it under your pleasure you will definitely see the consequence you will definitely experience the consequence and that is what matters the most we must be responsible for the consequences behind every act behind every thought behind every action that we take so truth is something that cannot be told because the moment you tell the truth in any language you are already confining the vastness the infinite possibilities of the truth into the limitations of those languages those words i mean think about 26 alphabets every language has limitations there is not absolutely every words has been created so far to experience or to explain or to express everything that the nature has we still not fully advanced in the language point of view you know we we don't have the complete set of vocables and complete set of words and expressions to express our feelings the truth so the moment you start telling the truth it becomes untruth the moment you start thinking this is the truth that is also untruth the moment you start believing that this is the truth because your mind your body your sense organs your intellect your wisdom 
your past memories your future expectations the world's technology the economics the politics everything plays a role on their own self and to tint it little by little bit little bit so that the absolute purity of the truth is compromised right so what is real truth when it comes down to the human consciousness or to the human awareness it becomes untruth again so but somebody who knows the truth there is always an absolute truth which is always deep within us and we always know the truth but we pretend not to tell the truth not to know the truth and that is what the game that we have always signed up to experience in this life which is termed basically in spiritual terms called leela you know I'll, i'll tell you another story like you know, this is always i explain to my clients in a very funny way so that it goes inside you know i always try to create this aha moment so that something goes inside because truth is always one but we are not satisfied with one way right so you always look for many different ways of explaining understanding otherwise you'll get bored if you know that you are the brahman you are uh, everything and you are the god then what is the fun of living life like so to get a kick of life the mind plays the tricks of telling everything in an exaggerated way all the time the mind is always constantly hallucinating the brain is hallucinating every moment to learn about things to exaggerate things to add masala or the spices into it so that we have the you know the fun of living life otherwise life will be so boring so the mind itself plays the trick and nothing wrong with that because that is called life that is called the leela so but if you know that you are playing a game and it's only a game then you don't take it seriously you enjoy your life so it's like a, a grandpa you know he is trying to play with his uh, grandchild and then they decide to play the game of hide and seek so the grandchild will try to blindfold his grandpa and then ask him to stay in a particular place and then this grandchild will go around and hide and then grandpa has to go around and then find the grandchild so the grandpa is blindfolded and the grandchild closely sneaks out to the corner of the room and by looking at the footsteps with his age old memory of course like the grandpa will know exactly where the child is hiding but the grandpa will not immediately come and then grab the child because there is no fun of playing the game like so he will go around to the opposite corner like if the child is here on this left side he'll go to the far most right and then try to find it hey are you here are you here are you here and this child is giggling laughing all the time and he'll go to the other corner he'll go to the other corner sometimes he goes around it and he just plays the game for 5 10 minutes and all this time the child is just giggling and laughing because the grandpa cannot find but tell that but what is the story that the grandpa always knows where the child is hiding but he wants to amuse the child he is playing a game of this hide and seek so this is a very serious concept because we always know the truth but we always find the truth in something outside we always know where the happiness is but we always look for the happiness outside we look at a sweet dish oh, wow hey are you the happiness here i look at the beautiful flower are you here you look at a beautiful child are you here look at the sky are you here so you always move around the nature all our life looking for the happiness looking for the truth looking for beauty looking for joy looking for love looking for happiness looking for safety everything outside but never ever we come inside and find that everything is lies within me even though we know that why because we have decided to play this game of forgetting everything if sign a pact before we came here to this planet earth we have signed a game because this is the rule of the game hey you know the truth but you don't have to tell the truth you don't have to understand the truth you have to forget every moment that you are you don't know the truth just like the grandpa he tells him that even though i know i will not go there and then surprise him just like that there is no fun so that is a very serious concept we know what is absolute truth our inner conscience knows it all the time but we don't act on it because we want to extend the game but in the first story that i talked about the liar radhwa or micho radhwa in odia so but sometimes it can be very dangerous 
right? So every time we have to be responsible to contemplate on the power of the truth, to introspect on the truth. I'll tell you another story. And if you, if you just look at the story and then see there are so many different angles to interpret it. You know about Srimad Bhagavatam, Pedavyas wrote about wrote it, about the Leela of Lord Krishna, about all the activities that he did. So one of the core part of the story is, there was the king Parikshit, who was a descendant of the Pandava dynasty, Pandavas, Arjun's, I think, uh, grandson. The Parikshit, the king Parikshit, one day he went on hunting and he went to the forest and he moved around for hours together, evening time and he was uh, very tired and he was very thirsty and he was looking for a glass of water and then he found a beautiful ashram or a hermitage. So he went inside with the hope that he'll get a nice cool glass of water to quench his thirst and finally when he went inside, all the uh, children of the ashram, they have gone out to play, there is nobody and he started looking around within and he found that Rishi Shamika, he is in deep meditation, he is in a samadhi state and then he tried to make some noise, make his presence available but because the Rishi was in such a deep trance meditation, he did not notice about his presence and then the king was already thirsty and he had already lost his uh, conscience and he became very mad and he um, picked up a dead snake which is caught, uh, lying in the boundary of the ashram with the tip of his bow and he put as a necklace to the rishi when he was meditating. And the rishi was meditating, he, it, was, it didn't bother him and after some time all the kids came in and then he, he, they saw their, the rishi there um, all the figure, like the, he is the chief of the ashram and somebody has done such a great insult to our Rishi. And then his son, the Shamika's son himself, he was a young adult, like an adolescent. And he became very mad, he became very angry and to add his, uh, to fuel to the fire, like all his friends teased him, like look at a Kshatriya or a king must have done this one, who has the courage to do this? And then the, the son, while his dad is still in meditation. He goes to the river, takes some water in his hand, in his palms, and then with his spiritual power, he curses whoever that king or whoever that person has done this insult to my father. Within seven days, a poisonous snake will come and then the venom of this poisonous snake will burn him to ashes. Look at such a powerful emotion, such a powerful idea, such a powerful vital energy he infested as a curse. And then of course like it happened in reality. And then the king Parikshit knew about this. He realized his mistake immediately after that. He knew about this curse that the, king, the Rishi's son has given it to him. And he realized that you know he, he can't go to escape it. And he started um, thinking in a positive way. He started thinking like since I'm going to die in seven days, why not I take advantage of this one and then try to go deeper and then try to enlighten myself. And Shukamuni, the Vyasadev's son, he was summoned to teach him the whole concept of Srimad Bhagavatam within seven days. And before the, the Cobra, the Takshak, the Naga came, he became enlightened. He left his body even before the fire came in from the poison of the snake. Look, now there are different aspects of this story. So the king was meditating and of course the king taught his son a lesson like, you know, such a small act of uh, mistake, you cannot punish the king for so, you know, such a big way. So all the different aspects of the story. So, but look at the whole thing as a plot, like a movie. If the king did not do that silly act of putting the dead cobra on his, um, on the vicious so snake, the whole Mahabharata, the wisdom of Mahabharata would not have come. People would not have realized that human beings also or everybody can be realized through the knowledge. So all these teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam would not have come from a mistake that somebody did. So if you look at every story like Mahabharata, Ramayana, every story or any story of the present time also, there is always a deeper meaning behind everything that happens. You know, that's what they say, like whatever happens, happens for a good cause. If you have the wisdom, if you contemplate on the truth of it, go deeper and deeper and deeper and find out what is the truth. And then automatically you'll find more peace within. And that is so much contextual right now. 
because there is so much of media coverage happening everybody just putting different messages and then with the technology there is so easy right now to uh, manipulate these messages and to fabricate these message messages right so when you believe that one uh, is the truth without really investigating getting into it and then you keep forwarding to millions of your friends then what happens we are creating a world of fear we are creating a network of fear we are creating a network of mistrust so it is our individual responsibility to find the truth in whatever way possible and unless and until we really know it's the truth we should not really give it to others that's the first lesson that i am going to teach today right i'm also going to practice it myself because this is very very important that unless we know the truth unless we contemplate on the truth unless we do some due diligence some research about it we should not really propagate it all about because as i told yesterday the fear is the breeding ground for such viruses and maybe the truth is something else who knows let the time reveals it let the time reveal it the time is the biggest healer so if we contemplate every day for 5 10 minutes about the truth of life it will create more strength in our mind intellect and spirit that is why the bhagavatam talks about this concept called satyam param dhimahi that means if you meditate on the truth and seek this guidance through your intelligence so every stop and step of life you will be guided in a proper way the truth itself will guide us in the real path we don't have to go through lot of turmoils of life for no reason every experience will be a powerful lessons in reality so that we will know what is the truth at every moment of it because in truth every word has the power in it i'll tell you another story like one person she was a rich lady and she wanted to learn shrimad bhagavat bhagavad gita bhagavad gita was a very profound spiritual discourse she knew about that she hired one of the wisest uh, priest in the town and she requested him please teach me this bhagavad gita i want to learn it before i die and then the first shloka itself it says dharma kshetre kuru kshetre samaveta yuyuschava that means all the seekers of the truth all the warriors all the fighters are present in this dharma kshetra which is the land of dharma or the righteousness or the kuru kshetra which is from the kuru dynasty but now this teacher was very intelligent very smart he kind of jumbled up the words together and then he tried to explain to her that we see these two words dharma kshetra and kuru kshetra if you put them together in a different context it says that kshetra kshetra dharmam kuru right kuru kshetra dharma kshetra if you jumble them up it becomes kshetra kshetra dharmam kuru that means in every field you do your duty based on your education based on your talent based on your truth based on your knowledge if you do that you will become successful kshetra kshetra dharmam kuru in whatever field that you have chosen if you go to the deep and the introspect the truth and do the truthful thing you will become successful and after that this lady said like no after that please don't teach me anything else i want to experience this whole concept in my life right so two words itself are like magic potion so if you think about the truth every mantra that we chant to overcome this pandemic right now is a powerful mantra even om itself and the mantra that we have taken i'm totally happy i'm totally healthy truly happy and i'm building up a stronger immune system that itself could be a mantra so if you just contemplate on that the prana shakti is the mantra right so those are all very very important aspects of the truth so definitely we must take some time to introspect in the truth to find the truth and then meditate on the truth then automatically our conscience will become more and more mature we will overcome this intellectual immaturity emotional immaturity spiritual immaturity at an individual level at a national level and even at an international level at a global level so that we all as a human race rise up to the highest possible level of creation that the universe is aspiring for for billions of years so we are the uttaradhikari or we are the heirs of those sages who have been given this powerful technology and by the way with the advent of the technology it's very very difficult to hide the truth 
if you tell a lie or if you do something misconduct, at one way or other, the technology is changing behind you. Right? The satellites are there. Through the Google Earth, you can find out what's happening every second, everything. So everything can be revealed in very due course of time. That's why even our body also reveals the truth. That's why the, all the lie detector machines, they don't exactly work like that because you'll have perspiration, you'll have your pupils will become bigger when you tell a lie, your um, uh, ears can become red when you tell a lie. So there are definite signals that we are spiritual beings having a human experience and spiritual beings always tell the truth. So when you act like a spiritual being and then tell the truth and introspect on the truth, meditate on the truth, even at this moment we'll get realized because we are all realized. We're only playing the game, just like the grandpa, blindfolded, knowing that the child is hiding, but you want to goof around. 